Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now Qualcomm have unveiled the Snapdragon 865. And today I want to tell you all about it, what it is, what it's like on the inside and what we can expect in 2020. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so this is the first of three videos that I'm doing. I decided to publish three videos today because I thought a separate talk about the Snapdragon 865 was worth its own video. And then another video about the Snapdragon 765 and the 765G, they get their own video. And I'm also doing a video called all Snapdragon 865 devices will be 5G devices. So that's the third video. So I'm not gonna talk too much about the 5G capabilities of the 865 in this video because I'm dealing with that in the other video. Okay, let's get uh, cracking. So obviously the 865, the Snapdragon 865 is a successor to the Snapdragon 855, the 855, which of course was a successor to the Snapdragon 845 uh, and so on. So the Snapdragon 865 is a system on a chip. That means it has a CPU, it has a GPU. There will be some media stuff in there, an image signal processor. There is some AI stuff in there, connectivity and so on. So let's look at all of those and see how the Snapdragon 865 uh, is a true upgrade to the Snapdragon 855. So on the CPU front, the Snapdragon 865 has got the Cryo 585 uh, CPU design, which is basically a Cortex-A77 and a Cortex-A55 setup. So what you've got is you've got one Cortex A77 core, which is known as the prime core, and that runs at a higher frequency than the other cores, 2.84 gigahertz, and it also has more L2 cache, half a megabyte of L2 cache, 512K. And then next to that, there are three other Cortex A77 cores, which run at a slightly lower clock speed and also have less L2 cache. And basically, when there's only one kind of heavy task, single threaded task going on, that prime core can switch in, deliver good single threaded scores and then when there's more heavy lifting to be done the other three Cortex A77 cores come into life and then between them all four of them Cortex A77 cores can do all that hard work. Now for the less uh, kind of demanding tasks there are these four efficiency cores so you've got the Cortex A55 cores in there running at 1.8 gigahertz and that bottom half of the design is very similar to what we saw in the Snapdragon uh, 855. So obviously there's no change of a process node. This is still manufactured on seven nanometers. So there's no performance gains or efficiency gains because of the way the chip is made. However, the Cortex A77 is more uh, powerful, higher performance than the Cortex A76. And so therefore we are gonna see a uh, performance boost because of that change to the next generation of CPU. However, Qualcomm are saying it's a 25% performance increase compared to the Snapdragon 855. Now, it's not compared to the Snapdragon 855 Plus. So I think if you compare it to an 855 Plus, we're gonna see less of a performance leap than we did, let's say, between the Snapdragon 845 and the 855. It's also worth mentioning there is a four megabyte L3 cache that's shared amongst all eight CPU cores. There is also a three megabyte system cache, which is shared amongst the CPU, the GPU, the ISP, the uh, AI engine, and so on. While we're talking about memory and caching and so on, this device will support LPDDR4, but it also supports LPDDR5, that's the next generation, at 2750 megahertz. So we should see a good performance boost there just because of the new memory subsystem that is available. And when we get to the GPU, we have the Adreno, 650. So it's not a 700 series GPU that I know some of you were maybe looking for. This is clearly a continuation of the same architecture that we found in the 630, the 640, and now the 650. Now Qualcomm are saying that it has a 25% overall uh, performance boost compared to the Adreno 640 as found in the Snapdragon 855, not compared to the Snapdragon 855 Plus. So the difference between the 855 Plus and the uh, uh, 865, the Adreno 640, and the Adreno 650 in the Snapdragon 855 Plus and the 865 is gonna be less, maybe 10%, maybe 15. We'll see what the actual numbers are when we see some actual devices. However, with the Snapdragon 865, we do have an amazing step forward when it comes to the GPU. Qualcomm are now offering the ability to download new GPU drivers via the Google Play Store. 
So let just let that sink in for a moment. One of the problems we've often had is that when a smartphone manufacturer makes a device, you have to wait for updates and they have to come through the carrier and they have to come through the brand. And sometimes you might need bug fixes, performance boosts that are available just when it comes to stuff to do with the GPU. And now we don't have to wait for the carrier. We don't have to wait for the uh, OEM manufacturer. We can actually now get a GPU driver directly down from the Google Play Store. And that's gonna be really interesting to see how that works and how Qualcomm used that new ability to download new GPU drivers. A couple of things worth mentioning, the uh, 865 will support uh, display drivers with a refresh rate of up to 144 megahertz. And overall, Qualcomm are saying that the new GPU, as well as being faster, it's actually 35% more efficient. So even if we're not getting huge leaps in terms of GPU performance, we certainly should get better battery life when using that GPU in, for example, 3D gaming. When it comes to codecs, Qualcomm are telling us that the uh, Snapdragon 865 has got hardware assisted decode for H.265 and also for VP9. So that's pretty good going there when it comes to watching media in the new formats they're going to be supporting for mainly for 4K kind of video. And one final thing to mention about the GPU is that Qualcomm are bringing out uh, some features that we've seen on the desktop now into mobile, specifically uh, forward rendering. Now, I won't go too much into this now, but basically there is an order in which the objects in a 3D world can be rendered, and there's deferred rendering and there's forward rendering. Now, forward rendering has some advantages that could lead to speed increases and could lead to better fidelity on screen. It's a different process that happens inside. And you can get that today in toolkits like Unity, and Unity will now support forward rendering on mobile with the Snapdragon 865 and the Adreno 650. So obviously AI is a big keyword, a hot keyword today. Of course, it's really machine learning. I've said that once, I've said it many, many times, it's machine learning, not AI. But Qualcomm have boosted the machine learning capabilities of the Snapdragon 865. You've got 15 tops inside of the AI engine, that's terror operations per second inside the AI engine. And there's also now a sensor hub which is an always on sensor hub that runs very, very low power. There's an extension to the keyword activation hardware that we've seen before. So with keyword activation, the phone obviously always needs to be listening so that you can say the keyword for the assistant that you want to use. And the phone can actually pick that up very low power mode and actually hear that. Well, now they've extended that to actually context aware sensing. So this microphone that's on and working out what's going on around it can maybe detect the difference in indoors and outdoors, noisy and quiet. And that could be an advantage maybe in turning, you know, the ringer up louder or turning on vibration when you're in a very noisy place. I'm just thinking about these. They haven't told us how they're going to be used, but having this context aware uh, ability that when you're talking to the assistant, it's able then to work out something about the environment you're in through hearing the sounds using this hardware. Now that all sounds very exciting, it also sounds a bit scary as well, so we'll see how consumers, how you react to having a phone that's always listening to work out where you are by trying to work out the noise, the ambient noise around you. Hmm. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Qualcomm also done a lot of work when it comes to the image signal processor. That's basically how we're dealing with video and photographs. So of course, what we've got here, we've got 4K video capture at 60 frames a second, but at the same time, you can also take up to 64 megapixel photos while you're recording that 4K. So that would be good for the applications where you can record video and take snapshots of things that are happening during the video recording. And you've also got 8K video recording at 30 frames a second. So we could start to see some real good 8K cameras appearing now inside of Snapdragon 865 devices. There's also 8K decoding at 60 frames a second if there's ever gonna be any 8K content that you want to decode uh, on a device or through a device like this. There's also support for up to 200 megapixel camera sensors. So that's gonna be interesting to see what the uh, smartphone manufacturers do with that. There's also the ability to record 4K video and apply a portrait mode or kind of you know false uh, bokeh that appears blurring out the background in video while you're recording 4K. That's a pretty exciting feature. And now there is unlimited 
960 frames per second uh, slow motion, unlimited, not limited just to five seconds or, or 10 seconds, or whatever, but it's only in 720p. Now, when it comes to cellular, the Snapdragon 865 does not have an internal modem, not a 4G modem, not a 3G modem, 2G, nothing. There's no internal cellular modem. You have to pair it with an X55 external modem. Again, when I say external, it's not something you plug in through the, the USB port or something. External on the motherboard, outside of the chip is what we mean by external. Now, I'm going to talk about this in a whole video. The next video I'm going to publish is all about that. But basically, it means that you get 5G with every Snapdragon 865 device with millimeter wave support and sub six support and standalone, not standalone, and of course, dynamic spectrum sharing. And I'll cover all of that in that other video. Okay, so there you have it. So the Snapdragon 865, new CPU, new GPU, improved ISP, improved AI engine, external modem, Wi-Fi 6, which I just mentioning now as we go past. And we're expecting to see this in devices in early 2020. Companies like Xiaomi and Oppo have already announced they're gonna be using this device. And I'm pretty sure we can expect to see it in some of the big names like Samsung and OnePlus and so on, as we've done uh, every year as this cadence has continued between the release of the new Snapdragon and then the phones that come out the following year. Okay, my name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Do stick around for the other two videos I'm making on 5G and on the uh, Snapdragon 765. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.